This is the 2024 Toyota Sequoia TRD Pro. Today we're going to see if this extreme off-road trim can conquer our mountain test course. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. The Sequoia is Toyota's large three-row SUV. It features a modern interior, three rows of seating, and a big engine. Unlike the new Grand Highlander, the Sequoia is based on the TNGA-F architecture, which is shared with the Tundra. That means that this is more of a large, truck-like driving experience, whereas the Grand Highlander is more of a car experience. We've already done a full review of the 2023 Sequoia, and we've even driven it up a snow-covered mountain. For 2024, this vehicle is essentially unchanged. The only major difference is a new signature color, Terra, which we see here. Since we've never brought the new Sequoia out here to our mountain test course, I figure now is a great time to see if this vehicle is up to the challenge. But before we get started, let's check out all the key features. Under the hood is Toyota's iForce Max hybrid powertrain. This features a 3.4 liter V6 combined with an electric motor for a combined output of 437 horsepower and 583 pound-feet of torque. It is connected to a 10-speed automatic transmission with part-time four-wheel drive and a dual-range gearbox. EPA rates economy at 22 miles to the gallon on the highway and 19 in town. That said, I did just drive this vehicle from the Washington Peninsula over the 4,000-foot Snoqualmie Pass, and now we're here at 2,000 feet and I averaged just over 17 MPGs. I do want to say, however, I was not driving for efficiency. Because this is a TRD Pro trim, it does come standard with a nice list of off-road equipment, including a rear locker, TRD skid plate, 18-inch BBS wheels wrapped in Toyota's OEM version of the Falcon Wild Peak, a multi-terrain camera system, cast aluminum running boards, and an LED light bar. It also features Toyota's excellent multi-terrain select and crawl control systems to help manage power distribution and optimize the powertrain for tricky situations. Maximum ground clearance, 9.1 inches, which isn't bad for such a big beast. In the back, you get a surprisingly small amount of space, and that is because it has a third row, and the third row is not removable. This is as flat as it gets. Now you can slide it back and forward, but you never get a flat floor. Underneath the third row is actually the batteries for the hybrid powertrain. Uh, again, not removable. Towing capacity is 9,020 pounds. Just gotta take the panel off to find the hitch. Price as you see it here, 80,560 US dollars, including destination. So here we are in the fall on our mountain test course. And fall means weird kind of conditions. This morning, it was actually freezing when I got here. It's slowly been thawing, which means that we have a surface of mud over frozen dirt. I don't really know how this vehicle will behave. Uh, and so I really wanna start with something that's pretty easy. We're gonna do the Rattler, which has a steep climb out, and that will give me an opportunity to see how this will deal with the muddier uh, situations because that exit out of the Rattler is typically covered in mud and it's fairly steep, so it's gonna be a challenge for this vehicle. Now we do have a little bit more than nine inches of ground clearance here, so we should get through everything. If we do scrape a little bit, we do have a TRD skid plate on the front. I noticed there's a uh, body armor over the fuel tank too, although they don't really claim it as being body armor necessarily. Before we go into the challenging stuff here, I'm gonna set up the vehicle for high. I don't need to do multi-terrain or any of that. This is a pretty straightforward, basically just a rough road with four by eight rock on it. So let's go ahead. This thing is so big and the hood is so high, it's really kind of hard to see the line uh, without using the monitor right here. So uh, surround view camera system, very important in a vehicle like this. So the reason I say today is gonna be particularly tricky is uh, simply because in the shadowy areas, it's gonna remain frozen. However, where the sun's been, it may or may not be frozen. It might be muddy. And once this mud gets soft, it is like cement. It'll basically fill up the treads 
and make it almost impossible <laughs> to get any grip. Um, our only kind of refuge is to be able to get enough wheel spin that it's going to fling the mud off. However, this mud is extraordinarily sticky. So don't think of it like normal mud. This is like super mud. So right here, I am going to change MTS up and I'm going to do the mud setting because that will allow for additional wheel spin, which should help fling the mud off of the tires. And that is basically it. I'm going to go into drive, MTS, four high, and up we go. I'm going to keep momentum. Now we're going to see if we're going to slide here or if it's going to be easy today. Oh, oh, oh a little slide. Not too bad, though. Okay, so we might actually be able to do all the courses today. At first, I wasn't sure because when this course turns to mud, it is impassable in certain areas. For an example, just watch my Raptor R video from earlier this year. Yeah, that was a mess. Being that I'm currently in four high, this gives me a good opportunity to test out the hill descent control system. If I'm in four high, it's hill descent. If I'm in four low, it turns into crawl control. I hit the same button here, and then with the dial, I can dial in my speed from three miles per hour to 18. And it does grab absolutely immediately. There is no pre-roll before the brakes grab, which is really nice. A lot of uh, CUVs will have a lot of roll before they actually grab the calipers. Now, I would like this to be slower, and it is interesting to note, I just drove the new Toyota Tacoma, and it has a minimum uh, hill descent speed of two. This one has a minimum of three. So once I'm down here at the base, I turn off the hill descent, and then I just roll normal. Now, this is what we call go for run. Typically, this is a very easy climb. However, <laughs> given the possible slimy conditions in segments that have been exposed to sun all day, it could be challenging. So again, I'm just gonna not take any risks. I'm gonna keep it in four high. I'm turning on MTS for mud, and I'm basically just gonna blast up. So let's see how this does. Ooh, oh, oh, slippery. Oh my gosh, that is slippery. I can feel it. Uh, come on, let's go, let's go. Let's keep that momentum. I'm just keeping the throttle in, trying to keep an easy throttle, and I'm lifting when I start to shunt off the side of the road. Oh, and the sun's in my eyes. Ho, oh, there's a big boy. These Fox shocks, though, are actually doing a really good job. Okay, we've got some ice here on grass. That's always tricky. Ooh, but we maintained momentum and got up. Yes, yes, yes. Ha, did it. Okay, it was super slippery. These tires definitely had a lot of lateral movement as they were hitting those slopes with the mud on the surface. So <laughs> the conditions are probably only gonna get worse as we uh, continue to film this throughout the day because of course the sun is out and it, things are slowly warming up. By the time we get to the ladder and Python Pass, yeah, things are gonna be really interesting. Now let's go ahead and try Sidewinder. I'm going to go down this hill again, and I've already been down once. When I go down the first time, it actually squishes the moisture into the ice that's on the surface, and it melts the ice. So it's actually slipperier the second time. Let's go ahead and do hill descent, just because I think this is going to be kind of on the sketchy side. Oh, we actually went to, oh yeah, we're sliding. We are absolutely sliding on the mud right now. Brakes are locking in. I'm gonna turn right and slowly add throttle. Oh, good. Now, I know you're looking at this going, isn't it being a little dramatic? No, no, I'm not. I know this road. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna get one attempt at this because I think that if I go through it a second time, uh, the melted ice on the surface will be a problem. So let's go ahead and set this up. Actually, let's take a look outside what we have here. This is our rock crossing at the base of Sidewinder. Um, shouldn't be too difficult for a vehicle like this. We have a skid plate if we hit something. Um, also, it does have more than nine inches of ground clearance, so it should be okay. I'm gonna try to hug it all the way on the right, uh, just because we have more rocks over there. And then over here, this is really slick. You can see how much this is already sticking to my foot. That's the problem with this stuff. It's slippery and it sticks. Yeah, anybody out there have babies? Yeah. You know what this stuff is like. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. So for the rock crossing here, I am gonna change it into four low. Let's go ahead and put it into neutral. 
I'm gonna put it into the MTS of rock because I want minimal wheel spin. Do I really need to do that here? No, but I'm gonna do it as a demonstration. So you can see those brake vectoring systems shift power left and right. I'm also gonna turn on my rear locker. So the rear axle will be locked, the two wheels will rotate together, and then the front will really heavily depend on that MTS system to shift power left and right. Now I do wanna note that Toyota does not let us turn on the rear locker in two wheel drive, it only works in four high and four low. Uh, and right now it's not engaging, so it'll probably engage about halfway through this rock pile. So let's go ahead and start rolling through. Oh, there, it's now engaged. So now the two reels, wheels should work together in unison. Oop, I am scratching a little bit. Oh boy. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Okay, so it is so slippery. This is, I think, emergency measures. This is exactly where I got stuck with the Ford Raptor R earlier in the spring. So I'm gonna take these cameras down. Uh, I'm gonna throw a drone up and I'm just gonna try to blast through here uh, and hopefully make it to the top. Okay, get this mud off my feet. So you might be asking, why am I even bothering with putting a drone up if it's so complicated? And that is because I will get one attempt at this. And whether I succeed or I fail, well, let's just say it's better to have it on film. Because that's the show, right? What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put it back into four high, go back into neutral. I'm going to switch MTS to mud. There, so we got wheel spin potentially. I'm going to get drive and I'm going to turn on a rear locker. It doesn't want to turn the rear locker on in four high. That's interesting. The Toyota Tacoma, the new one, allows me to turn it on in four high. I guess we're relying on MTS. Hopefully this looks easy because I tell you, it's not. I get one chance at this. Let's keep momentum, swing it around. I am sliding everywhere. Oh, 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 yeah, let's get up, let's get up. We, oh, we got it, we got momentum on our side, yes. I would not be able to do that again, I guarantee. Let's get this section also muddy. Oh, sliding everywhere. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And up. Right. Okay, well, I was really concerned about how that was going to end up clearly. Um, but because we were able to keep momentum and it was the first attempt, I was able to get up. Um, however, I guarantee second attempts, not going to work. In fact, I don't even want to go down that access road anymore at this point because too slippery. That said, I am all for trying Python Pass. I have no idea how well this would work, but the nice thing about Python Pass is if I can't get up it, I can always escape without getting stuck inside the course. I don't have a lower exit yet. I do need to build one one of these days. But you know how it is. You always want to build the fun stuff before the safety stuff, right? Right. So I feel I should revisit this section. Uh, just to basically tell you why I was so concerned. Uh, the rocks are here, where the base is sidewinder, the S-curve is right there. And this mud, it's so slippery. Like I'm just kind of drifting here. And, but the worst thing about it isn't even the slipperiness, it's the fact that it sticks in between the lugs. I mean, look at my boots. So you can imagine with a tire, it basically turns even in all terrain into a slick. And obviously you wouldn't drive on mud and slicks, but here you really have no choice. Before I attempt this, I am gonna get out and check conditions because that's always important, especially in mixed weather like this where it's both sunny as well as freezing. Okay, what do we got here? Frozen, frozen. Wow, at least this lower section is completely frozen. Now granted, once tires start spinning, that will melt the ice immediately and cause mud. But I think the best approach here is actually to treat this like rock, because it is as hard as rock. And I want to reduce wheel spin. So let's give it a try. Because as long as I can keep these tires from spinning, ice won't develop. At least that's what I'm hoping. The temperature is currently 32 degrees out, by the way. And the tires are at their full pressure. They're about 36 PSI on all corners. So four low, going to drive, MTS. Let's treat them like rocks. <laughs> and then let's lock that rear. Let's do it. It's gonna crawl slowly. 
And crawling slowly also will give us the opportunity to kind of feel for any bumps. Okay, we're going, we're going. I'm, it's a little slippery. The sun is super bright. I can't see a thing. Like literally cannot see anything. Can I see anything on that camera? Okay, where's a couple guideposts? Oh, yeah, we're gonna get this. Now we need to cut hard. Oh, oh. Uh oh. Come on. Oh, oh, MTS gets it. MTS to the rescue. Unfortunately, this thing is so big. I actually did just bump into the dirt. So uh, let's not do that. Hopefully it was a soft. Hopefully it was a soft part of dirt. Ah, okay. Come on, let's go. Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. Let's go all the way up. Okay, now up here it ha it's had a little bit more sun. In fact, it's currently in the sun, so this might get muddier as we go up. And I still cannot see a thing. That's not really the fault of the truck, but being such a big vehicle, I have less room for error here. Tight corner, can we make? Nope, can't make it. Have to reposition. Oh, which means. Oh, can we get it? Can we get it? Can we get it? Can we get it? Yes! Ha! Did it! Oh. Okay, well, I feel like since we made it up that way, that the strategy was vindicated. Uh, treating it like rocks was the way to go. Now, granted, it did get slippery in spots, especially when a wheel would start to spin. It would slick up and get muddy almost immediately. But I think maybe we'll give the ladder a try. Now, I'm a little concerned about the ladder, not just because of mud, but also because when we brought out the Silverado ZR2 recently, we really trenched it up quite a lot. Ooh, just rub the underside there. Uh, <laughs> so we, tr we, we caused wheel trenching because it was muddy when we attempted it and uh, we left without cleaning it up. So it has now frozen into trenches. So the big question I think I have is not only is the mud gonna be a problem, but also, um, are we going to have issues with clearance? Because the Silverado ZR2 Bison has more clearance than this rig does. So it's possible we might just be dragging. And if we are dragging, then I'm not even going to try it because there's no reason to absolutely destroy the underside of this test vehicle. One thing that's nice here is that the ladder has been completely in shadows, I think, all day. So it should also be covered in ice, just like Python Pass was. Okay. Yeah, yeah, this is icy. Should be really hard. Uh, these trenches, though, these are these are really deep. Up to about there. Let's give it a try. I'm gonna keep it in four low. Uh, rear locker is on. MTS is currently set to rock because I want to go as slow as possible. So let's do it. Let's listen for grinding. especially on this approach. I'm gonna go a little to the right so I'm not in the trenches. But if I slide laterally, it's gonna be a whack. So we're just gonna give it a try. Very slow, keep some momentum. Stay to the right. Conditions are everything. Oh, we're in the trench. At least our back is. We're gonna snake up. <laughs> Get a little bit more momentum here if we can't. Oh, oh, oh. Nope, that wasn't the right approach. Okay, guess what I'm doing now? I'm sliding. Don't like that. Where's my trench at? Apparently I've overshot the trench. See if MTS will get us through it. I'm just gonna keep the wheels straight. I mean, I know this mud. This stuff is, this stuff is wicked. So yeah, we're just gonna, we're just gonna be making things worse. Let's back up just a little bit. Oh, okay, let's try to go again. Nope. I mean, you try to deadlift. What is this thing? Like 6,000 pounds? Uh, uh, I don't want that front to swing around because we do have a little bit of a slide sideways here. And I don't want to thrash the wheels. None of those are good things. Let's try forward again. Dude, this ice is... Mud and ice, man, and I am sliding a little bit. Ah. Yeah, this is clearly no joke. I am gonna give it one more try, though, I think. 
I can. Ah! Slidey, 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 right in the trenches. Yeah. Let's try this again. See if we can get some momentum. It's probably worse now because I've already caused a little icing to melt. So, yeah. Oh, when the forward throttle is on and you're sliding backwards, that's a bad sign. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead, I think, and abandon this. But I think it gave a pretty good attempt here. One thing to note is that these tires are not peak rated. If you buy the actual Falcon Wild Peaks from the dealer, the AT3Ws, those do have a peak rating. Also, the trail versions even have a peak rating, but the ones from Toyota do not. So would a peak rating have helped? I don't really think so in this condition, although it is very cold, so the compound probably is a little bit different and it might have done a little bit better. But at the end of the day, that is very steep. I think it's about 28 degrees at a maximum. Uh, and it's just really hard. And without proper tires and in icy conditions, it's just not gonna do it. This has been really fun, driving the Sequoia around the property. Pretty soon, things are just gonna get worse before they get better. And by better, I mean snow. Snow should be here in a few weeks. At that point, we'll be able to come back and do some snow testing on the main lines. So for Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again right here real soon.